5. Creation gives the world a distinct, yet always dependent existence. a. The world has a distinct existence. This means that the world is not God nor any part of God, but something absolutely distinct from God, and that it differs from God, not merely in degree, but in its essential properties. The doctrine of creation implies that, while God is self-existent and self-sufficient, infinite and eternal, the world is dependent, finite, and temporal. The one can never change into the other. This doctrine is an absolute barrier against the ancient idea of emanation, as well as against all pantheistic theories. The universe is not the existence form of God nor the phenomenal appearance of the absolute, and God is not simply the life, or soul, or inner law of the world, but enjoys his own eternally complete life above the world, in absolute independence of it. He is the transcendent God, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. This doctrine is supported by passages of Scripture which, 1, testify to the distinct existence of the world, Isaiah 42 verse 5, Acts 17 verse 24, 2, speak of the immutability of God, Psalms 102 verse 27, Malachi 3 verse 6, James 1 verse 17, 3, draw a comparison between God and the creature, Psalms 90 verse 2, 102 colon 2527, 103 colon 1517, Isaiah 2 verse 21, 22 17, etc., and, 4, Speak of the world as lying in sin or sinful, wrong. 1 colon 1832, I John 2 colon 1517, etc. b. The world is always dependent on God. While God gave the world an existence distinct from his own, he did not withdraw from the world after its creation, but remained in the most intimate connection with it. The universe is not like a clock which was wound up by God and is now allowed to run off without any further divine intervention. This deistic conception of creation is neither biblical nor scientific. God is not only the transcendent God, infinitely exalted above all his creatures, he is also the immanent God, who is present in every part of his creation, and whose spirit is operative in all the world. He is essentially, and not merely per potent time, present in all his creatures but he is not present in every one of them in the same manner. His imminence should not be interpreted as boundless extension throughout all the spaces of the universe, nor as a partitive presence, so that he is partly here and partly there. God is spirit, and just because he is. Spirit he is everywhere present as a whole. He is said to fill heaven and earth, ps 139,710, Jeremiah 23 verse 24 to constitute the sphere in which we live and move and have our being, Act 17 verse 28, to renew the face of the earth by his spirit, Psalms 104 verse 30, to dwell in those that are of a broken heart, Psalms 51 verse 11, Isaiah 57 verse 15, and in the church as his temple, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, 6 verse 19, Ephesians 2 verse 22. Both transcendence and immanence find expression in a single passage of scripture, namely, Ephesians 4 verse 6, where the apostle says that we have one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. The doctrine of divine immanence has been stretched to the point of pantheism in a great deal of modern theology. The world, and especially man, was regarded as the phenomenal manifestation of God. At present there is a strong reaction to this position in the so-called theology of crisis. It is sometimes thought that this theology, with its emphasis on the infinite qualitative difference between time and eternity, on God as the holy other and the hidden God, and on the distance between God and man, naturally rules out the imminence of God. Bruner gives us the assurance, however, that this is not so. Says he, much nonsense has been talked about that Barthian theology having perception only for the transcendence of God, not for his imminence. As if we too were not aware of the fact that God the Creator upholds all things by his power, that he has set the stamp of his divinity on the world and created man to be his own image. The Word and the World, page 7. And Bath says, dead were God himself if he moved his world only from the outside, if he were a thing in himself, and not the one in all, the creator of all things visible and invisible, the beginning and the ending. The Word of God and the Word of Man, page 291. These men oppose the modern pantheistic conception of the divine immanence, and also the idea that, in virtue of this immanence, the world is a luminous revelation of God.